had to go down to LA to school. Shortly after we get on the road, a sheriff gets behind us and the lights go on. I pull over and sheriffs get out. They bring us to a holding station in East LA. They come by with the confession. These are your drugs and you're going to distribute them. I sign it. And they're like, you're in a lot of trouble, man. You're probably gonna go away for 20 years. I've done eight years in prison. It's left a mark on me and it changed me as a person. It made me a violent person. It made me do shit that I don't wanna do. It made me a person I don't wanna be. He took it to another level, like 10 levels. What I noticed is an escalation. Do you want me to fucking die? Is that it? You want me to die? We actually had plans to get into a detox together. Well, he was okay for a while, but then he seemed to get back into the drugs. And that's when the troubles really began. He was going to the AA meetings and he ran into an old friend and she told him that she was prostituting. None of this is making any sense. You're a pimp now? Do I lie and manipulate? Fuck yeah, I'm a drug addict. Who doesn't do that? He made it a nightmare. I want to talk Stop to you. Stop recording me, Ryan. People don't seem to give a It's just, fuck Ryan, fuck Ryan, fuck Ryan, he's a piece of shit. He had called me crying. I need help. I don't know what to do. I mean, how are you going to keep living like this? Like, you can't. Like, something's got to change. Do you not understand what drug addiction is? You think I have a choice? I'm going to shit why I don't want to fucking be with What do you mean? You give me the if I want to get high, I want to get high. The only way to stop doing heroin is if I want it inside myself for myself. We went to a Taco Bell right across the street and we went and shot up. Fucking, I took my bloody ass fucking wife beater off and we shot the dope that we just stole and I stabbed my heroin dealer. And that is that story. What's up, you guys? Welcome to today's video. So I have a very special treat for you. Ryan Leone's wife, Karina, and Seth Ferranti are going to join us on the channel, and we're gonna talk about Ryan Leone's documentary and his book, and just some things that um, he was going through in his final moments, and what she was going through as well. If you don't know who Ryan Leone is, or you don't remember the interview that I did with him a couple years back, Ryan unfortunately passed away because of his drug addiction and he was larger than life. He's a father of two and just a really good person, but he had demons and traumas that were unfair. And what we're going to focus on is what he went through during his time in prison and behind the scenes as a father and a husband. He was working on a documentary. He was also working on another novel. And Seth came through and he is helping Ryan finish his documentary, but he's changing it a little bit. Seth has completed Ryan's second novel and that is available right now. I will link that in the description box down below. And please go subscribe to Ryan's channel. Karina has kept it going and she's also posted her experience behind the scenes as a loved one of an addict on their Patreon channel and all of that helps her take care of their boys. So again, I will link that all down below. Karina, I'm so unbelievably proud of you. Your strength and courage to step outside of your comfort zone and continue Ryan's channel and his Patreon and then to work with Seth to complete these projects that he didn't finish is unbelievable. You're a superhero and your experience as to what Ryan went through is going to help so many loved ones of addicts. You are making a huge impact and I know it might not feel like it all the time because this online world is really rough, but you are and I am so proud of you. Love you, girl. Rest in peace, Ryan. Palabra. What's up, YouTube? So I have two very special people here with me tonight. This is Seth Ferranti, and you guys know Karina probably, uh, but we're gonna get into Ryan's story, and they are about to release a very triggering, very powerful, very in-depth documentary about Ryan. For, for those of you out there that don't know who Ryan is, Karina, can you kind of just share a little bit about Ryan and who he was, and just like a little bit about his story? Yes. Um... I mean, well, um, Ryan was a novelist. Um, he was a very gifted and talented writer. Um, and, you know, along with that, he started a YouTube channel. And, um, I mean, he kind of, he got a following on there. Um, and, you know, he's been labeled as uh, one of the best storytellers of our generation. And, um, you know, he 
was a very creative individual. He always had a million projects going on and he wrote screenplays. Um, I mean, he just kind of was a jack of all trades. He did everything, um, you know, but along that he also had, you know, demons he didn't deserve. He struggled a lot and went back and forth between sobriety and addiction, sobriety and addiction. And um, also, you know, spent a good chunk of his adult life incarcerated. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of pretty much his background. But also, the Ryan I knew also was, you know, a father. He was the father of my children. Um, so we were family. Um, and he is very dearly missed. I don't know if I ever told you this, but the interview that I did with Ryan, hands down one of my favorite ones, and the whole day, I knew I had the meeting with Ryan at like evening time, like dinner time or whatever. But the whole day I was filming, I was in a music video, I did an interview with someone else, and that was like two hours of just the interview. I was so tired that I almost canceled on him. And I'm like, well, he's a YouTuber too. He can probably carry me through because I am exhausted. Like LA kicks my ass every single time. So I'm like, it's fine, just power through. And... I am so grateful that I had that um, time with him and we did that interview and it was just so entertaining and I'm like, I don't have to do shit really. And I wasn't even tired after I started hearing him talk. I'm like, well, damn, <laughs> okay, this is crazy. But I'm like, do you wanna go to dinner with the rest of the crew? Like we're all going out, like it's been a long day. He's like, no, I just wanna get home to my girl to tell her how my meeting went at Netflix. I'm just so excited to tell her. And I'm like, all right, man, I'll, I'll see you next time. You know, I'll let you know when the video drops. And it was like the sweetest thing ever. He was just so excited to rush home and tell you about that meeting. And I don't know, it just, that always like warms my heart. And I don't know if I ever told you that. Oh, I never knew that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, he, he was attached to my hip. <laughs> and you're so right. I mean, Ryan loved to talk, um, so I'm sure. He, I mean, I've seen the interview, and yes, he definitely um, probably, um, you know, he just always liked to talk um, nonstop and would be on the phone for hours or, you know, doing his stories even on YouTube. Um, I've kind of carried the torch on Patreon, and I, I, don't, I can't do our stories. I don't know how he did that, but he just loves to talk. So. No clue. Like, he, he was ridiculously talented, and I was so grateful that, like, I just had to, like, sit there and be like, oh, that's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Because I was, like I said, exhausted. <laughs> but it was one of the best interviews I've ever done still to this day. Um, Thank you for sure. He, he was working on the documentary and had been for a very long time. Um, but the, the documentary that's coming out, and, you know, maybe Seth can chime in here, it's a little different than what Ryan wanted. If I was working with Ryan this documentary and I was trying to do my idea, he had a, di a distinct idea, like, what he wanted to do. And I know because I talk to him all the time. You know, we were friends. I wasn't working on his documentary. I kind of went through all the peaks and valleys, and he would show me stuff, tell me who he was working on. But, you know, it, it was his thing. So, you know, when, when tragically – you know, he passed, you know, that documentary really, really kind of died. You know, Idiot Savant, The Savage Life of Ryan Leone. And, um, you know, Karina and, and Ryan's dad, Frank, you know, they, they knew our friendship. You know, I, I went, went to the funeral. I spoke at the funeral. And uh, we talked about it because they had access, you know, to all, all the footage. And I was like, yeah, I want to try to do something, but I want to do something, you know, a little different. I want to have an impact. I want to make it a social issue. Yeah, I, I love Ryan's story. That, that's my friend. And, and Ryan Ryan did some, you know, messed up stuff. And, and Ryan did some really good stuff. You know, as a lot of people who struggle with addiction or crime or, or going to prison, you know, go through. But uh, I just saw his story, man, because the, the whole thing, like, you think in this country, like, we incarcerate people. And it doesn't matter how long or, or whatever, but then we just send them out. Like with nothing, like here's $200 and a bus ticket. Go fend for yourself. You know, and this is after years. Like me, myself, I did, I did 21 years. I know, I know you did a lot of bids, you know, stays. Uh, you know, Ryan did maybe like a total of eight years, you know, in and out. But, I mean, that's just crazy as a society to think that, like, you got literally dudes that have been in shoe for how many years and it's their outdate. Oh, here, $200 and a bus ticket. So that's kind of what this film – that I've made, you know, with, uh, you know, Karina and um, Frank, his dad, Frank Leone, acting as uh, executive producers. It's, it's about that. So 
It's called a tortured mind, the reality of post-incarceration syndrome. And post-incarceration syndrome is, is like a, a, it's like a new form of PTSD. Like as, as you know, they've lost, started locking all the people up in the nineties and all these people are coming back out after hundreds and hundreds of thousands and almost, you know, probably a million people have been locked up or more in this country over the years, the last 25 years on the war on drugs and stuff. It's just, you know, th this is the show, man. This is what can happen to people. You know, we need to start taking some steps so that we don't have more Ryan Leone's. Yeah. And you know, everything that you just said, is completely valid and on point. And at the end of the day, like it's going to take generations to fix what we have done with our incarcerated population. You know, we lock people up for drugs and, you know, you were locked up for 21 years and you're a very talented writer as well. Um, and I, I love you. I love your shit. Um, Thank you. but, but fuck, like you literally, you literally take someone's life away. You completely change who they are. You rewire all the shit in, in their brain. You see trauma after trauma. Like it's a violent, chaotic place. It's a fucking miserable place. Not that anyone would be surprised to hear that about prison. Like obviously prison's bad, but, um, there's no reason why someone should sit in prison for eight years, 10 years, 20 years for, for drugs. Um, and you know, it, it's going to take us a very, very long time to back out of it. And I don't think we ever will, you know, cause the prison industrial complex is a fucking nightmare and it's just, it's so ingrained into our society that there is just no way we could economically even get out anytime soon. But, um, I, I think Ryan would want the word savage used in the title. Can we change it? Can we add like hashtag savage life? <laughs> Ryan Leone, <laughs> he would want that in there. <laughs> He's pretty, he's probably looking down. Um, and Palabra too, no. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's going to be a very long hashtag. We have to get it all in there. Um, but you know, like, he, <laughs> yeah. he was working on it for a very long time. And I think like when you're so close to it, when it's your story, like you, you see it a certain way and no one else can tell you differently. Even if you're like, hey man, like there's so many layers to this. So I think the direction that y'all went, I think it's brilliant and it's important and it's tragic and it's heartbreaking and it's just the reality of so many families in this country and especially people like you know like like his family like 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 frank and and his mom and then and karina and the kids like i try to incorporate that that into the doc like how their experience you know how how did his life how did his addiction how did his mental illness you know affect them because because that's important because really the reality of it is i'm not saying ryan was perfect when he went in prison you know, he, he was struggling with drug addiction and, and maybe he had a little mental illness. But going into prison and witnessing, especially that last bit he did in the California system, mm -hmm. and witnessing the violence, you know, in the California system, on top of what he might have already witnessed in the feds. But the feds are a lot tamer than, than the California system. You know, we, we can say that, you know, unless you're at the highs or whatever. But that kind of exacerbated, you know, everything and made it worse. So then he came out of prison worse. And I'm, I'm sure Karina can, uh, can attest to this. And I, I think we focus on that, on that in the doc that, uh, you know, how did this dude cope? He, he went in with problems and he came out with worse problems. Like nobody helped, nobody cared. It was just all on him, you know? So, you know, or, or his family and, and loved ones. So I just think that's really important to show because a lot of people, I mean, I'm sure, you know, people, I know, we know a lot of people, they're good people. And, and and at heart, Ryan, Ryan would give you the show off his back. I mean, the dude is, is super charismatic. He'll help you if, if he likes you. You know, that dude, like, helped me in so many ways. It was like, he had, like, my back all the time, no matter what. Like, online, he would have my back online. And I'd be like, dude, stop arguing with the trolls, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't even argue with the trolls. <laughs> you know, and he, he'd be, like, going in for, like, hours. <laughs> I'd be like, dude. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of good people like Ryan, the like good hearts, good people, you know, kind-hearted. They get messed up on drugs and um, yeah, and, and we don't help them. You know, we don't, we help them a little out here, but in prison, we don't help them out. And when they come out, you know, this just, and then people's lives are, are just destroyed, but it's not just their lives. It like, you know, it's a domino effect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Karina, like you can totally share whatever you're comfortable with sharing, but like this one person that went to prison, 
they, like now their life is fucked, right? Now they can't like rent places and it's a whole thing. But like what you said, it's so many other lives that are impacted deeply, tragically because of this. So that's why I said, you know, a little bit ago, it's a generational thing. It's gonna take a very long time. Cause now just this one person, now two little boys are growing up without their father. Now a wife is, is raising these babies alone. Um, Ryan was an only child, so his parents had to bury their only child. Like, it is trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. And I just, I can't even imagine what that is like. I mean, yeah, it's been, it's been, I, I mean, it's indescribable. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't even know how I've gotten or survived to this point. You know, it's like, uh, it was tragic. And, you know, like you were saying, though, back up a little bit, you know, how the odds are against you when you get out of prison. And that's very true. Um, I got to live that with him, you know, house hunting or apartment hunting or, you know, him getting employment, that pretty much um, led him to, you know, kind of starting the YouTube because he got turned down for so many, you know, um, jobs and he was doing telemarketing and he hated that. And I did that too. <laughs> Miserable. He was good at it, but he hated it. You know, he absolutely hated it. And, um, you know, it was just, he, it felt degrading to him and, um, but you know, he kind of stumbled on the YouTube and he, he realized, look, the odds are against me. I'm going to make my own, you know, job basically. And he, you know, he was good at it. Um, he found his little niche, I guess, and he was gifted at it, you know? So, I mean, in a way it was kind of nice that the odds were against him because it led him to that. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's sorry. That's Nico in the background. Um, that is one of the most heartbreaking things for me is yes, that my, my boys do not get their father. And, um, I mean, it's, it's truly heartbreaking when I look at them and, um, you know, there's certain moments I'm so proud of them and I, I want to share that so much with him and I just, I can't, you know, um, it's, it's very hard. And yes, my heart breaks for Diane and Frank as well. That is their only child and they had to bury him, you know, um, Poor Frank, he had to deal with that and Diane slipping into dementia and their mm. family dog of 14 years dying back to back, back to back. Um, but, you know, he's he's being positive and surviving and, you know, he's we're a good support system to each other as well, which is nice. In Ryan's like worst moments, like you had to go through you know, so much shit because he was good and then he wasn't. So like you, I don't know if you have like PTSD or like if you were like constantly in a state of like stress, but I could only imagine because you just want to believe that like if we are dating someone or married to somebody that is in active addiction and they get sober and they go back, you're constantly like, are they telling me the truth? Are they going to get sober? Like I was an intravenous addict for almost 10 years, you know, so I can't imagine how my family felt. Like sometimes they'd be like, okay, no, she's good. Other times you'd be like, hello, <laughs> hi, are you in there? What the fuck is wrong with you? You know, and it was brutal for them. So like whatever you're comfortable with sharing, but um, I, I kind of want to hear like what you went through when shit was just really hard. And then what Ryan went through in the end, and you know, you you were there for all of those moments. Um, I, I mean, that's why I never gave up on him. And I, you know, did this with him off and on for five years. You know, why didn't you leave sooner? Why didn't you do this? Well, it's, I saw there was a good person underneath the drugs and addiction. Under all of that, I, you know, experienced Ryan, you know, like that and I knew the good person under there and I was trying so desperately to just get him back in any way I could help him and be there for him and be supportive and loving that's why I held on for as long as I did um and it's funny you say PTSD because yes after all of that I do have PTSD my um you know I I know the symptoms but I've talked to many therapists after all of this and you know I'm still healing and processing a lot of this um say I do have PTSD. If anything, you know, um, unplanned happens, I freak out and I break down and I have panic attacks and I sink into a depression. It's crazy. It's a whole new world that I'm learning to navigate. Um, meditating helps me a lot. Therapy's helping. Um, 
and you know, I'm just learning how to get through it. Um, we did have a lot of up and ups and downs, um, and I have been sharing these stories on Patreon, and right now I'm in the West Covina series, so I don't want to get too far into it, but Northridge, actually after the Midwest, um, when he went to the Midwest to work actually with Seth and a couple other people for the dog, he completely just went nuts. And that was a big turning point for our relationship. I mean, prior to that, he had a good amount of relapses, but, you know, we were able to get him back and, you know, you know, move on with our lives and things would be good for a little bit. Maybe he'd relapse again, but we'd get back on track and it'd be fine. After the Midwest, you know, he just went completely nuts. Um, he pretty much hacked into my phone, went through all my things, was trying to, I mean, he would go through even like what movies I was watching on Netflix. And if there was like a picture of a, a shirtless guy or something, he's like, what is this you're watching? I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? I didn't even watch that. That's some football show my dad was watching on my Netflix account when he was Great. in town. Drop a link. <laughs> it's, I think it was called All American or something. And I was just like, dude, you know, it was just crazy stuff, but making these, you know, mountains out of mole hills and, you know, falsely accusing me oh, almost all the time every day of cheating on him and cheating on him and cheating on him, which I absolutely did not cheat on him, but making me feel like I was crazy also dealing with constantly defending myself and, you know, I was also seven months pregnant at the time that this all happened. So it was just a lot going on and it was scary and it was emotional and stressful and it was just too much at times. Um, and, you know, then eventually um, Wyland was born and I thought maybe that would, you know, calm his ass down a little bit. But absolutely not. He, you know, got so far off in the drugs. Um, you know, it was just, I don't know. It got to the point where we pretty much had to give him an ultimatum, you know, between me, Frank, and him, pretty much. Um, I was, pr no more hard drugs or I'm leaving with the kids. Um, Frank, I, I won't talk to you anymore. Me and your mother will not speak to you anymore. We'll cut you off every way. You know, we won't speak to you. We'll cut you off financially, whatever. Um, and, you know, he pretty much said okay and kind of agreed. Um, and he calmed down for a little bit. And that's when he got on, you know, methadone. Um, but, you know, he started to get sneaky with that and slip back into drugs. And over a short period of a couple months from about March to when he passed away in July, he just went crazy on the drugs again and which ended obviously in a tragedy of his losing his life I just want to make a comment you know um crazy what's crazy about what you said karina is because i remember when i was doing the shoot for the psychedelic revolution and you guys came up to san francisco and like you were you were like whatever seven eight nine months like you were you know basically about to give birth the picture you paint is, is in his life is like all this chaos and stuff. You know, I don't, I don't see this. I talk to him, but I don't see like what you're seeing. Right. But he came up there and like, he wanted to see the shoot and meet some of the people, but then he was like, let me get on camera. Let me get, cause you know, Ryan always wanted to get on camera always. Right. And so I interviewed him and he didn't really know, you know, that much about the LSD history. You know, he didn't participate in it, obviously like a lot of the people I was interviewing, but he'd read enough, you know, he was worldly enough that he could comment and, and he gave like a killer interview, you know, a killer interview. So it's just so crazy. Like think like here goes this dude, like his life is in chaos, but he can still go in front of the camera and look good and perform and, and, and sound good. You know, I'm probably not going to use any of his stuff for the psychedelic revolution, you know, but you know, something we could release on YouTube one day. Cause I mean, he was just like a wordsmith, like the gift of gab. I was just like, damn, this dude's like killing it. And he doesn't even really know this stuff. So that's just like, that's that whole juxtaposition or conflict of Ryan, like the chaos, but this ability to, you know, basically like pull shit out of his ass. You know, that that's like the whole contradiction of him, man. You know, the dude was just like such a hustler, like such a go-getter. You know, that's why, like I saw myself in him. That's why I fucked with him. Yeah. You know, but then I knew, I knew about the drug addict stuff, but obviously I didn't know it to the level that you did. No one could have. No one, no, like, 
no one could have ever like experienced what you did and saw what you did. And I just can't even imagine because like from your seat, like you're watching this person that has like literal star power. He's so talented and he's so, you know, good at a million different things. And then behind closed doors, it's like, bro, get your fucking shit together. Like you have so much to lose. You're so fucking talented. You have two beautiful boys, like get it the fuck together. And like, it's, it's it has to be the most gut-wrenching and frustrating thing. Like everything that you oh said, yeah. like that, I left my ex a year ago. He's alive, uh, but he relapsed and it was a year of fucking hell and chaos. And slowly but surely everything we built, I just watched it fucking get destroyed, you know? and. I, I didn't say this when you mentioned that earlier, but if anyone tells you why didn't you leave, fuck them. Fuck them, because they don't understand. Why didn't you leave sooner? Shut the fuck up. Don't ask women that ever. Um, it's super complicated. Like, you matter too, and when you have kids, like, it is so hard. It is so hard to, you know, separate from that person or to, like, not talk to that person. And, like, I hate that people judge that. I don't know why I'm ranting about it, but I just want to hug you so much right now because I know, I know what that feels like. Yeah, and vice versa. I know. I'm sorry you had to go through that too because it, it is terrible and it's, God, I mean, I feel like it definitely causes damage um, that we have to heal mm. within ourselves. That, um, that's that good. It changes damage. us. It changes us. Yeah, it really does. Um, you know, he, Ryan was also working on a book. I mean, he was working on fucking everything. Um, but you guys finished his, yeah. <laughs> his second, right? Second novel? Did I miss one? Second yeah. novel, Any Heroes, yeah. I didn't finish it yet, if I'm being honest. Yeah, so, um, that was like the same thing. Really, th this whole plan that Frank and Karina and me came up with you know with 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 his content because we knew there was an audience out there we knew there was an audience and we knew he had a bunch of uncompleted stuff so you know basically you know frank frank came to me and he said he wants to do all this stuff not only for his son's legacy but also you know to potentially provide income for his offspring mm -hmm. so you know that's where all this stuff this is where all this stuff is is is, is coming from and um I mean, I do it because because I, I love I love the dude, right? I mean, I'm not saying I'm not going to get compensated at all. You know, I'm going to get paid for my time. You know, so it's not like I'm just doing stuff for free. You know, I get paid for my work, but I'm creating this stuff. You know, with Frank's blessing, so that the kids and, and Karina can have you know like like a means of of income. I mean, we don't know how much it's going to be. You know, it could be this, could be that. You know, that that's open in, in this business. You know, if you go viral, you don't go viral. You know, you never know. But Ryan has definitely gone viral before with his stuff. So, I mean, there's a good chance. You know, so yeah, the book Any Heroes. I was probably about you know maybe three fourths complete, and and we had some notes you know, of kind of the outline. And then there was some stuff like he had written some chapters and lost it. So like Frank and Karina, like they're like digging through these computers or getting people experts to try to find these files. So I don't know, we could never find anything, but um, yeah. So I just took it and, and I read it and, you know, basically I, I go straight at the end and in, in, in his voice, you know, me and Ryan are very different writers. You know, I'm like, I'm like nonfiction. I'm like sharp to the point, you know, like I, I can say like, you know, the dude walked in and you punched him in his face. That's what I would write. Ryan will make that same <laughs> sentence like a paragraph or two paragraphs. Very flowery prose. So, you know, I, I had to adapt a little bit. Like I say, I had, you know, I had three-fourths of the book. I had 60,000 words to work with, you know, and I only had to add a few. And and I had the notes. So, you know, um, hope I did him justice, you know, but that's that's how that whole whole thing came about. And uh you know, in the documentary, I'm 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 very grateful to be involved and in, uh I think the book is is super high quality and uh this documentary too. You know, it, it's a super high quality touching on a, a very important issue. When is the documentary coming out and where can everyone watch it? So right now it's looking like January. We're in the final stages. I I, I finally got the uh final cut from the editor, so now we're gonna add in the animation scenes, we're gonna do the final sound and color, and then the deliverables. I'll get it to the aggregator hopefully before Christmas. And um, yeah, we'll be out sometime in January. It's going to be on Amazon. So it'll be on Amazon, available to, to rent or buy. And uh, yeah, I've been working on that. I'm ready. I'm ready to get this out. It's been a lot of delays, but you know, stuff like that happens with stuff like this.
in the book Any Hero. So Any Heroes is on Amazon. You can order on Amazon. Um, it's hardback. Uh, it's a Kindle edition, so the ebook, and we're going to come out with a paperback too. So that's all through Amazon. And we do have a, a special version of the hardback book with like a special inside cover that's only available on Patreon, but I'll, I'll let uh, Karina talk more about that. The limited edition of Seth had these beautiful covers um, design and they're exclusive for um, Patreon members. As you guys know, Ryan did have a Patreon channel and a YouTube channel, um, you know, and I kind of carried the torch, you know, after Ryan passed away, um, a lot of people were like, you should do stories. We want to hear your side. What happened? Because the last year of Ryan's life, he stopped creating content, period. He wasn't doing anything. That's when he really was struggling and slipped into addiction. Um, and he wasn't posting anything. And he kind of just fell off the face of the earth, I guess, in you know, social media land. And people wanted to know, well, what happened that last year? What happened? So when people first asked me to do that after he passed, I'm like, there's no way, like, no, I'll never do that. I'm sorry. You know, but you know, as, as time went on, it just kind of started speaking to me and, you know, I was like, well, maybe I should, maybe I should tell stories and maybe I should tell my side and explain everything that happened. Um, I wanted to be a voice for, you know, the loved ones that fight the battle of addiction with you. Um, and that's what I'm doing on Patreon. And recently, I've started to drop, st I started the Patreon December of last year. So I've been doing stories and content on there for about a year now. And all of Ryan's old stories are on there too. I haven't taken anything off. Um, so recently, I've started to upload videos on YouTube of my stories. And, you know, Frank is doing Frank Fridays again. So I'm slowly dropping those on YouTube. Um, and... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't know how you do YouTube. It scares me. Uh, uh, but, you know, we are pretty much for the true fans sharing what happened, you know, that last year of his life and so on. Well, your experience is so valid and it's going to help so many people. And if you ever have any nerdy questions about YouTube, I got you because <laughs> I am a super nerd with that. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. You must have some tough skin because... Yeah, I mean, I cry a lot. I cry a lot. <laughs> I eat a lot. You know, food's like food helps a lot. Um, but <laughs> don't read <laughs> the comments, right? God damn, they're really they're rough. Sometimes they're funny as fuck, though. Like if I get a really good hate comment, I it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> um, but I'm so proud. There's of a lot of love and support, but there is. It's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Yeah. Usually like a couple, like one will be like in front of the camera. The other one will be like, absolutely the fuck not. I'm good. You know, so for you to push yourself outside of that comfort zone and to share your experience, I think is amazing. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And we're going to share Thank all you. of that it wasn't stuff. Easy. Don't worry about the screen gangsters. They're not about nothing. They hide behind the fake names and like to make the screen gangsters. So, you know, I call them screen oh, yeah, gangsters in prison. Were... In prison, we call them cell gangsters. They were the dudes that, like, when the doors were locked, they were, like, the loudest. But when the doors were open, they were, like, the quietest. You know? So the screen gangsters, the <laughs> exactly. same mentality. They're screen gangsters. Yeah. yeah. Don't let if them. Hey, don't, you, don't sweat. I, I, yeah, don't sweat them. If they saw you in public, they'd be like, hey, can I get a selfie? Like, that's what they're going to say to you in public. Behind the screen, they're fucking, like, chopping it up. Like, their hands hurt. They're typing so fast. <laughs> yeah. Vicious. They're vicious on that keyboard. Uh, we're human too. That's all I'm trying to say. We're humans with feelings, and we're putting it all out there. So, I mean, it can. I mean, it can be tough, but we know we what we've gotten ourselves into. But yeah, it's it's new to me, so I'm sure it'll get easier as time goes on. Well, I'm here to help however I can, and I will link all of everything we've talked about in the description box down below. And as soon as the documentary comes out, I will post that everywhere. Um, but I, I love y'all and thank you so much for your time and hopefully we can work together. I want Seth to write my book and work on my documentary next. So, you know, maybe we can make something happen. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Palabra. Good night, guys. Right. Thank you, guys. Palabra, that's right. <laughs> Have a good night. Palabra. Bye.